Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to use an ultrasonic skin scrubber, which actually looks like a little spatula that you would use in the kitchen. And what this is going to do is it's going to lift off debris and clean out pores of anybody who's uh, clogged or has excessive uh, skin on their face. It's great for exfoliation and it's great for cleaning. The vibration is what loosens up the debris and the dirt and oil in the pores. And it moves at 28,000 vibrations per second. So the first thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to uh, cleanse her face. Okay. And we're using uh, Pavonia products today. All right. are nice really soft um, sponges just warm it up in my hands a little bit It's always a good idea to start off with a nice uh, cleansed face, even though the ultrasonic scrubber is part of the cleansing uh, ritual. I would definitely clean prior, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to do an exfoliation as well. You don't have to, but you can, and I'm going to because I want to get as much off of the face prior. That way it really works on any stubborn clogging or um, debris that is stuck on the skin. client will feel a little bit of uh, vibration on them when um, I do use it on her face. But first, uh, sorry, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use an enzyme that contains both uh, bromelain and uh, papain. So this will eat all the dead skin cells in seven minutes. So you just want to apply with your brush. Get above the lip, down the mouth. And with this particular enzyme, we have to dip our fingers in water and gently massage it to activate it. This breaks open the enzyme spheres to start their enzymatic process. And we're going to leave that on for seven minutes. Okay, so now I am going to just remove our seven minutes is up. And somebody's dinner's ready. <laughs> Pull this off. going to tone her. This is a hydrating toner. 
works nice with actually all skin types. Okay. Now, when we use the scrubber, okay, the skin has to be wet. Now, you can paint the face with water if you want because this is actually an exfoliation that is a water exfoliation, okay? So you can actually paint water on the face. I got fresh water. If I wanted to do that, I could just use my brush and paint it on the face. A lot of times I use a 2% or excuse me, 1.5% salicylic peel and I wipe across and then I use this. So they're getting a very, very, very light superficial peel at the same time. Or today I'm actually going to use See, this has ionization on it as well, so it's able to push product into the skin. So I might as well get this um, nice toner pushed into the skin as well, okay? So I'm just going to turn this on. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to put it on ionization so I can push the product in further because this is a great uh, hydrating toner, water-based, uh, that works really wonderfully with the skin. So I'm going to take my uh, cotton pad and wet the forehead. I like to break the face into sections and I usually start at the forehead. With the spatula facing down, you want to gently glide across from one side to the other or you can go up and down if you choose. I just feel it's easier for me doing it this way. Once I get to the other side, I wipe off the debris that I just picked up, and then I move to the next line. Again, gently moving across to the other side, and then once I get there, again, I wipe the spatula off. And then I finish the top of the forehead and if you look close you can see the mist coming out next I'm going to do the cheek again I'm going to apply the hydrating toner but I'm going to add a little more uh, because I want it a little more wet and then I will start and remember, I'm just showing you how to do each section. I'm not getting each, I'm not getting every single solitary area. But when you're working on the face, you wanna make sure that you never go over acne lesions, active acne lesions, uh, whether it's a papular pustule, because you may open it up and spread the infection. So you noticed I started in front of that lesion there. And the one that I just went over is healed. What she has left there is just some post-inflammatory erythema. There was nothing left uh, that I was going to break open or uh, spread on the face. And I continue to work this section. And then I'm going to do the nose. Don't forget, you want to keep wiping the spatula off after each line. I'm going to start at the top and gently work my way down. This is a very comfortable treatment for your client. However, if you have the apparatus on too high, the client will feel heat that they won't like and they may feel a little bit of achiness. So make sure that you have it on the correct setting. So you want to get all sections of the nose gently turning the head working your way down or up whichever is more comfortable for you wiping the spatula off after each line and now once I finished the main section of the nose I'm going to do around the nostrils or the nasal alars and this is a little trick actually that I, I learned while I was in France training. So to get these um, 
sort of crevice areas, you want to uh, wet the face just like I did and using the corner of the apparatus, gently glide it into that area. Nothing else is touching the skin except that corner and where do you see what comes out? Look at that. So that's how you would work around the nose and any other lines or creases on the face. Now she doesn't have any lines because she's so young, so I'm just pretending. If she had forehead lines, I would wet them and then gently take the corner and run through the line to remove the dead skin cells, debris, oil, or any comedones. And that's how you work this apparatus. Hope you enjoyed.